creeper. I heard it through the grapevine. How much longer would you be my baby? <laughs> Creepers. I, oh my gosh, I am so excited. It is happening. Tonight is the night. We are heading up to Northwest Portland now. You're definitely not going to want to miss this one, you guys. Stay tuned. Doing a little Will Vinton creeping. There's a skeleton up there. You guys see him? Here comes our train. I am so excited for this. Let's do this. train and we are headed up to 23rd so we got a little bit of a walk I wanted to kind of walk and just get out and enjoy the night on a Friday night so we're a little early but that's okay and uh, well we're really way early because I actually had already purchased the tickets like a couple weeks back so didn't want to sell it you know didn't want to have to go up there and then be told no I'm pretty sure it'll be sold out so yeah it's just kind of nice to walk through this part of Portland and see it back open too and folks enjoying their time downtown. All right, let's make our way up to 20. I keep saying 23rd, but I meant to say 21st. Cinema 21. All right. We got the front here looking all good. The marquee lit up. <laughs> yes. It is happening, folks. I'm excited and we're a little early. It looks like we should be because the line's getting a little long and I'm liking these big iconic Will Bitten mustaches here. So this is definitely going to be a good time. Yeah, we're going to get in line now because it looks like it's filling up quick. This is so cool though. Here's this side. Their marquee looks so awesome anyways, but to see that up there, it's going to be fun. Beautiful 21st Avenue. So we're just kind of maneuvering our way in. And obviously I can't show you guys the movie, but I'm going to try and document as much as I can. So pretty stoked. All right, got the ticket in advance. And I love the fact that they put the iconic mustaches up there. Looking good. <laughs> pretty stoked on this. All right, just getting here. I am so excited. And on the way in, we got a pin for the collection. So excited for this. All right, theater one straight ahead. All right, guys. Everybody's just getting kind of settled in. Oh, I'm so stoked. This is going to be so fun. And I am so excited to get the little Will Vinton pin. His mustache. That is so cool. I love it. And we got this coupon for some reason here. Not quite sure. The folks are just, just now kind of kind of filling in. I'm hoping to run into my buddy Kevin. We shall see. Like I said, folks are just now kind of filling in. Ooh. And you got to understand, folks, this stuff is as vintage as it gets. These are not replicas. These look like they were made in the late 80s, wrapped in bubble wrap, and have never been taken out since. Alright, so here we go. The winner of the California Raisins Coffee Mug one, five, two, five, three, zero. Nice. I am the short film that plays before it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to bring up 
A uh, longtime producer for Will Vinton Studios, Marilyn Zornado. <laughs> and joining Marilyn will be the director of Clay Dreams, Mark Evans. Hello everyone and welcome, and look at this, sold out, <laughs> sold out, completely packed, thank you all for coming, and thank you all for wearing your masks, this is a vulnerable population because all the old timers <laughs> are here and we're worried about everything, so we really appreciate everyone wearing their masks. I want to introduce this, uh, the Vinton family is here. I saw Jesse and Myla. Where's my, are they upstairs? There they are. Jesse and Myla. Is anyone else here from the Will's family? Billy. Where are they? Good. Great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming out. And how many of you work at the Vinton studio? Awesome. <laughs> wow. So you know a lot about this documentary. Right, so cool. <laughs> you get to see some surprises. Um, Mark Evans did a great job, and um, he's going to talk a little. The film got released, or not released, but premiered a year ago in New York, and it's just been a long time coming to get to this point where we're finally bringing it home to the Portland audience and to so many people that were a part of the story, lived this story. Um, hopefully, you think I got most of it right. Um, I guess we'll see, but it really means a lot for you all to come out tonight, and I, I wish Will could have been here for this. I was talking to Marilyn, saying, you think he would have worn his tux? And I think he probably would have, because um, he always you know, celebrated the big, the big uh, events. So um, thank you for coming out. We're going to do a Q&A after with uh, Marilyn, myself, Bill Plimpton is here, and some of the rest of the team. Um, so stick around for that after the credits, and um, you're going to introduce the film that's going to, Joe Grasco, that's going to play the film. Yeah, um, we have a special short before the feature by Joan Gratz. Joan, where are you? Stand up. There she is, you see? So, those of you who don't know Joan, she, um, you'll see her clay painting throughout the film, and her film, No Leaders Please, based on a Bukowski poem, will play before the movie. So, we're lucky to see it on the big screen. Cool. Okay. See. Yeah. And they kind of uh, were interested in doing this film too, and they found out that it was already made. 
So uh, to me, next XYZ came on, and you guys were amazing partners, and uh, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Tamir and Team XYZ, so I wanted them to come up here as well. And we've got Michelle, Mariana. <laughs> And just a part of this whole ride, and one of the, you know, the, the, the heart in this film in many ways as well. So, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for such an amazing film. That's just really remarkable. And I think I'd seen it at an earlier time, and I just, just sort of stunned with how much you know that I really felt touched by the whole thing. But I was really curious, um, you're not from Portland. Yeah. <laughs> You're not from Portland, and you're you're not an animator. Why did you decide to work on this film? Yeah, so I'm just passing this down a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So the, the initial idea for this came in 2015. I was finishing up my previous film, The Glen and the Squalor, and uh, just looking for new projects. And I came across an article titled "How the Father of Coordination Lost His Company to a Rapper Named Chili T." <laughs> Great headline. Um, and I saw the pictures at the top, and it was like, oh, I know these characters. I know, I, I watched I watched these films when I was a kid. I remember the California Raisins and the Noy. Watched uh, Clinician Christmas Special every year growing up. So I knew the characters, and I knew the guy, Will Benton, with his mustache. But I, but I didn't know the story. And this article really detailed the story, and it felt like a movie when I read it. And so I, I, remember, I reached out to Will, I found a contact, and reached out that day. And he responded pretty quickly to my surprise. And I was, I was excited. Like by that time, I'd already done, you know, spent all day research, and I was like, oh my god, I, I want to make this. And, um, and so he wrote back. He's like, I'm not really interested, but we can. Meet. And that was kind of the entry. And so we, we got together a couple weeks later at, at the Starbucks on the subway. And uh, and I thought we really hit it off. It was a great meeting, like a three-hour meeting. And then I followed up the next day. It's like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and uh, and so it's kind of like that. He said, we can, we can still we can keep talking. And that was kind of just, you know, that was that, that was the end. And so we talked for, you know, probably about six months before he uh, finally said, all right, let's do this. And I think it was just building trust and, you know, and making sure that if he was going to do it, that, you know, I was the right person to do it. And um, and then and then once he committed to it, it, it was great. I mean, all the access I needed. And, and there were people along the way that I interviewed that said, you know, it might be a little bit tough for you to make this because Will's going to want to really be in control of it. And... That wasn't my experience at all. It was uh, any time I had an idea or ran someone by him, he would say, it's your movie. You know, do, do what you want. And I would show him stuff. I, I got to show him about a 10-minute clip uh, before he passed, and he really liked it. And I think that was that. I, I'm glad I got to show him that. And I think he felt like, all right, it's, it's going to be OK. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'd like to ask Bill, you, know, you were a good friend of Bob Gardner. And uh, do you want to talk a little about him? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I can't remember how I met Gardner, but um, we were drinking buddies. He liked the Glenn, <laughs> obviously, nice. and uh, we would talk about animation and, and caricature. I, I did. He, he was doing this uh, thing for the uh, Elvis Presley House uh, in, in Nashville or Memphis, sorry, and he had to do a caricature of Elvis, and he couldn't do it. And so he called me up and said, you know, will you do this Elvis character for me? And uh, I said, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. And, and then he would move out to the, um, the mine in Nevada, I believe, where he was a tour guide for a mine shaft. And he would send me these letters. And those letters, I still have them, are the funny, every sentence was hilarious. I mean, he, the guy was a writing genius. And I, I think that if he had kept on doing his writing and could get his life together, he would have really been a, a big star. So um, I was saddened when I heard about his death, but it, you know, like I said, he was a great musician, great writer, great animator, great storyteller, but he had a dark side, and that's, that's, that's what came out. I did want to say one more thing that I've seen this a third time, that kind of I, uh, I realized, and you probably know it too, was that uh, Phil Knight's uh, problem with Will Benton running the studio was he was losing money. He didn't know how to, you know, how to balance the the the, the, the money, the income. However, when Travis took over, they really lost a lot of money. 
Those films, <laughs> they were great films. I love the films. I, I love, uh, you know, what Like is doing. But, you know, they, they cost $200 million, $100 million to make, and they brought in maybe $30, $40 million. I mean, you would probably know better than me the kind of uh, money they made. But, um, yeah, he lost a lot of money on, on, on the film. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you, Michelle, about Will's support of artists in Portland, and you were in so many, you're the voice of so many of the things we heard tonight, and uh, do you want to talk about that? Michelle, can you give us a Wilshire pig when you get the mic? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's fine, I can dedicate, so I'm a little rusty. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that um, Will put his whole heart in everything. I mean, this makes me so emotional, you guys. And it's so great to be here with everybody and see a lot of the old family and us old family and uh, and just share this moment. It's really important, I think. Oh, and hey, Will, it's kind of neat, isn't it? <laughs> um, I met him, uh, Russ Fast, who was one of the uh, men in the cobbler seat at the table. Um, he had opened a talent agency across the street from the barber shop house. And Will was looking for more voice talent and he mentioned me. And I didn't I'd never heard of him when I was doing my bands and touring around the Northwest and stuff. And I just fell in love with the whole thing. And we became friends and he was very supportive. Um, and it was really a collaborative, a collaborative process all the time. Uh, there was just a joy about it, a purity about it. The process, the people involved, the artists that brought it all to life. It was just an extraordinary experience, Marilyn. And it, it, I mean, it led me onto a much larger career. Not that that wasn't huge, but I don't think, you know, when you're in the middle of something like that, you don't realize it. You're just doing it. You have no idea of the ramifications. There are people all around the world that were inspired by, or even got to cut their teeth at that studio. And they're carrying them all around the world and creating beauty and magic and possibility. Holy smokes, what a legacy. Phil might can take it. I still didn't need to leave, use little children to build his empire. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have I said too much? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So the, the thing that sort of surprised and was the most chilling to me was that footage during the deposition and um, I just wanted to have you talk about how you got that. Yeah, the deposition footage was great. Uh, I didn't know about it for the first couple of years. I, I didn't even know it existed and I know a lot of you didn't know that it existed. Yeah. Uh, and Will, it was like two years into the project, he casually asked me one day, did I ever give you the deposition? And I was like, what do you mean, like uh, transcripts? He's like, no, we shot it. He's like, what do you mean you shot it? He's like, no, we just, I hired a couple guys and we shot the whole thing. I was like, no, you didn't give that to me. You were going to tell me about it. Um, and because I always knew that would be part of the story, of course. But I didn't know how we would tell that part of the story. And so as soon as, um, you know, he gave me a couple boxes and they're on beta tapes. And we got them digitized. And it's like, oh, that's how we'll tell the story. We'll just tell it. We'll just show it how it is. And um, that was definitely, you know, a, a game changer. I was talking to Tamir earlier today about, you know, when, um, I first showed XYZ footage, and you know when he saw that, they're like, "Oh, okay, this is this is a movie. You know, this is a real movie here." And so it was, um, yeah, that was that was a great time. So I don't know how we would have told that story otherwise, um, and it had never been seen before, never been transferred to digital. Um, I don't think anybody had ever seen that footage before. <laughs> anybody here shoot it? We don't even know who shot it. Yeah, they did a great job. You're here. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to know why he asked them to shoot it. I, yeah, I know, but why? Did, does he think that Phil Knight was a, a crook? So even though he made me work six months to make 
to, to you know, finally say okay to making this movie. Uh, he was he, he shot it. I think so. Michael Moore could make a documentary about it, and I know that because about a year after he passed, uh, we were uh, actually Tamir, you were with me. We were in his garage, like kind of like one last little swoop to see if there was anything else, you know. Because as you see, the film is full of just the materials from the archive, and um, and so I just wanted to make sure like so anything cool. was missing. And I found this box of materials from the deposition, and, and Will Benton's hand handwriting said. Contact Michael Moore about documentary. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So, so I, that you know may have been why he actually shot it, thinking we'll, we'll do something with this. Interesting. Yeah. And Tamir, I'd like you to have talk about how you got involved with the project. <laughs> That's teamwork right there. The world's longest microphone. <laughs> this is why we created wireless microphone. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming out tonight to see this film. It really um, is is an amazing piece of of, of, of um, work that Mark has done. You know, at XYZ, we're a, a boutique company. We've been around for 15 years, mostly in the narrative space. But I, I've been heading up the nonfiction uh, division for the last four years uh, after the launch of our film, Framing John DeLorean. And uh, one of the executive producers is actually here, Dan Green. Uh, he had been a huge fan of Will Bittens, and I remember from an early age of getting to know him, uh, learning about the whole story. And he also sent me the article about uh, the rapper Chili T. And at that point, I did my own search, and I saw Mark working on this project. And I contacted him, and we got together, and seeing how far along he was, but that he needed sort of the help of a, a more established production company, we then you know, you know, forged teams to move forward with this. And, and you know, really seeing his first film, The Glamour and the Squalor, which he had done a few years earlier, solidified uh, you know, my belief in him as a, a true doc filmmaker. And uh, we're working on several other projects with him. He's a, a client now of XYZ, he's on the management side. So we're really, we're very happy with the way this turned out, Mark, and I'm very excited about the next few projects we're gonna do together. Uh, but going going back to this story, I mean, it be, besides the sort of uh, titillating, sensational aspects of the Phil Knight versus uh, Will Bitten, David versus Goliath story, for me personally, there's just something very romantic uh, and visceral about clay animation that, for a lot of early you know generations now, don't have any idea about it. We we are only familiar with Pixar digital animation and what that looks like and just felt like this would be a, a beautiful marriage of, of both of a romantic retelling of uh, this sort of golden era, as well as this very sort of compelling uh, art versus commerce component to it. And um, something that was, you know, very prevalent for us throughout the entire process was just making sure to tell a very fair and balanced story from all sides, uh, because this is a very complicated and nuanced story. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, our guts can tell us exactly, you know, who was in the right and the wrong on, on certain things, and um, just was proud to be a part of it, Mark. And I think you did an amazing job, and excited to see what else we're going to be doing together these next few years. I add on one thing that as as we were making this, and I and there's been a handful of reviews that I've seen that have picked this out. Maybe some of you, some of you will have as well. That as we were kind of pitching it, trying to get you know the financing together and uh, additional partners, we were saying that it was it was kind of a cross between you know in in filmmaking when you're pitching it's like oh it's this meets this you know you hear a lot of that and so we were saying it's this how you meet or uh, what, what's the Mr. Rogers my neighbor what you be my neighbor the Mr. Rogers documentary meets Social Network the David Fincher film about uh, Facebook. And that film is structured around these depositions, and um, so I don't know if anybody picked up on that, but that was definitely kind of the idea with you know, going back to the deposition to leave that in and out. We're gonna um, open it up for questions from the audience. We uh, Barry Bruce, I think, was still alive when you were working, and Joe Gratz and Don Mert and Mark Esteson are not on the screen. So I wondered if you'd contacted them and they could, weren't available, or what happened? Yeah, um, I, I interviewed Joan, which was a great interview. And you know, I was talking to Marilyn earlier, we interviewed probably 45 people for the film, and there's maybe 20 that are in the film. 
And at some point, it just becomes about you know, making the best film possible. And of course, you want to put everything in there. I mean, I interviewed Peter Lord, one of the founders of Ardman. And it was an amazing interview. And I was just like, oh my god, that's going to be so good for the film. And it just didn't make its way in, because when you start editing and you're telling one story, you know, um, you can't fit everything in. And you know, Barry Bruce, which I think we're going to see a tribute to Barry Bruce tonight, um, right after the Q&A. Uh, I would love to interview Barry. He was obviously a hugely instrumental part. It kind of shaped the look of the studio. Um, and I contacted him early on, probably 2016, and he just didn't want to do it. He kind of said whenever he does stuff like this, he says the wrong thing, and he regrets doing it all the time. And uh, so he didn't want to, and, and that was fine. And I, you know, I thought that we would go back to him at the end. And we and actually we did before he passed. Um, and he just just didn't want to do it. And um, and that was doing the same with Mark Gustafson as well too, unfortunately. But um, but you know everybody else that we were hoping to get from the film, uh, you know, other than the Knights, uh, did uh, <laughs> did come out. Just he exuded positivity, kind of, and and to his credit, in talking about. The, the Leica stuff, he he very much saw the bright side of of the whole thing, and and even in how he kind of transcended personally, it, you didn't get a whole lot of that from the film, but you could tell that that he had really kind of gone through this internal process to to think about it, and and those are the moments that you're talking about, Kevin, that, that you just kind of like see him processing, and you kind of see behind behind the scenes of maybe what he really thinks. <coughs> I want to echo that too, and when I was talking a minute ago about he who shall not be named again by me, um, <laughs> I was talking about that person. I think life is extraordinary. Uh, my animators from the studio went there and they, they're brilliant. I've had the opportunity to voice some of the films there. And um, so it's not about the artistry, it's not about the product. It's not about the fact they try to tell really incredible stories. It's about the other guy. But yeah, Will expressed that to me as well. That after the dust settled and he kind of got his bearings, he was kind of excited about it all. And I think that kind of speaks a lot to the core of the person. But it's still the other guy I forget about. <laughs> Hi, uh, yes, uh, this was a wonderful film, and I think you were very successful in capturing the man and his personality, um, so thank you. I did get a chance to see um, a little bit of an earlier version, and um, this is just even better than that, so well done. Um, I was curious, in looking at the credits, I see that Starburns Industries is um, uh, in there, and I was just kind of wondering, since they're the only ones that are present, what their contribution was on this. Yeah, so Starburns Industries, um, probably most famous for creating the show Rick and Morty, and also the film Anomalisa, which was Academy Award nominated a few years back. Um, so they're a production company along with XYZ. XYZ actually brought them in, um, and, and they were great partners too, but there was a time where we thought we were gonna do 10 or so minutes of original clay animation. Uh, we created these characters named Randy and Lodge. Randy was Will's, they were gonna represent Will's right and left brain. So Randy was the right brain, kind of crazy artistic. Uh, Lodge was the left brain, more of the business guy. And they had their own conflict, which was kind of representing Will's internal conflict. And so uh, that's initially how Starburns came on, is we were gonna do this clay animation they were gonna produce. And they did produce the uh, Clay Dream uh, title that you see kind of early in the film. Um, we ended up scrapping the idea for Randy and Lodge for several reasons. I mean, ultimately it came down to a creative thing that uh, it, we thought maybe would kind of get in the way also from a financing standpoint. But um, so we pulled that out and they were just very supportive though. I want to take advantage of seeing so much expertise up here. I want to ask a really open question. Where do you see animation today? Where do you see um, what's missing from it, and what direction do you want the industry to go in? <laughs> yeah, I'll take a shot at it. <laughs> um, I, I am, I, I'm like Will, I'm very optimistic about the history of animation. Uh, if anybody here are young animators, students who have animation, 
uh, you are a very lucky person because when I was at Port State, there was zero teaching of animation and there was uh, zero uh, buyers for animation. It was really a dead end business. Walt Disney had died and the studio was bankrupt and nobody thought animation had a life in it. But now, uh, what's really cool is that, yes, you have Pixar and you have DreamWorks and you got a lot of computer animation, but also you, know, you got stop motion with, uh, you know, um, all, all the great stop motion from, from London, Nick Park and Peter Lord and people like that. And you have uh, paper animation, which is what I'm doing. I love paper animation. And um, there's just different directions that, that's happening and TV and, and games and advertising. It just seems like animation is, uh, um, you know, you can do anything you want. The only limits is the, your imagination. And so that's why I'm, I love animation. A little uh, a promo here. I will be outside the lobby doing drawings. If people want a free sketch, I will do a free drawing. So stop by. You're going to have some stuff too, right? Yeah, posters and t-shirts. Come on out. <laughs> nice. So um, we just have one more thing this evening. One of our, our colleagues and dear, oh, there's one more question. Oh. Hi, first, really lovely film. I'm definitely excited to check it out again whenever it's on streaming. Uh, you mentioned that you went through an incredible amount of archival footage, and obviously we saw a lot of it here today. I'm really curious, can you, might be difficult, but can you quantify how much archival footage you had gathered by the end? And like, in the spirit of Kill Your Darlings, was there anything that didn't make it into the film that you feel really attached to? Yeah, that's a, two good questions. Um, as far as how much archival, I mean, it's always hard to quantify that because, I mean, definitely like, you know, tens and tens of hours and terabytes of footage. Yeah, some of that stuff is really big in size, some of it's small. Uh, but and a lot of it came from Will's archive, but not all of it, you know, maybe 70%. Um, Kevin McLean, who I think is here tonight, was a huge resource. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we've got pictures and video that we had collected. I mean, he, you know, I guess he, he, he's a collector of that work. He was at the studio as well, too. Got to start there, works at Disney now. Um, and Webster Culker was, uh, was also, you know, there's stuff that he shot six, on 16 that's in the film. Um, so really, and, and it's and it's the style of filming that I that I love, with, which is like, kind of like collage. You know, you're taking all these elements. So we shot, you know, the interviews and some stuff with Will. Um, you know, you know, call it live action or whatever. And then you've got all of his. You know, the work from the studio, which one of you know, my favorite things was pairing that with the emotions that are happening with the film. Uh, and then you've got the behind the scenes of the studio shot and the home footage. Um, so I love just the idea of putting all that stuff together. Wow. That was incredible. I honestly didn't. I knew it was gonna be good, but I didn't think it would be full of that much info. Oh my gosh, that was amazing, you guys. I am so stoked. And to hear all the folks that worked at the studio over the years kinda tell their side of the story. And I just wanted to thank you so much for doing this and, and all the information and, and all this is just so cool. I'm such a huge Vinton fan cool. and to like you said, really go through the archives and document all this. This has just been amazing. So thank you so much. I'm Christopher, by the way. Christopher, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. And the man, the myth himself right here. We were just talking about Mr. Plimpton himself. I said, I said, what did I say? Blimpton. Mm -hmm. But then I said, well, that counts because he does the blimp tunes, right? <laughs> so cool. This is so cool that he's taking his time to do this. I don't know what he's going to be autographing, but I did bring my raisin. So I was hoping maybe he could sign a little something for us. <laughs> this is so cool, though.
Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Look at this. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Plinko himself. So, I was wondering if you might possibly be able to autograph my race. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. I've got the uh, the voice of AC. Uh, I met him uh, out in Gresham at a music fest. probably worth a lot of money. And so, well, to me, it's the Nostats. What's your name? It's priceless, Christopher. That's right. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! Thank you so much. This is so rad. My pleasure. Look at this. He's got it all signed. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for doing this for us. This is so cool, man. Portland's just got to be in the water. Got to be in the water here. Oh, I like there's. Oh, that'll work. Arnold. Oh yeah, the Craig Bartlett. I had to rock the Arnold shirt. Somebody asked me, "What's your favorite Arnold episode?" I said, "The claymation ones that he drew up there at the studios." Thank you so much. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. Wow, wasn't that cool? And got the race inside too. Yes. So awesome. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. And we got Plimpton's autograph. Oh, that was nice of you. Thank you so much. Return the favor here. Got a lot of folks coming out. This has been so cool. I'm hoping to see my buddy Kevin. They said he was upstairs, so we'll see here. Here. <laughs> Uh, but oh man, this is so cool and you were like, you, you were the one that showed me what was up in the comment section. You are like, make sure you come down yeah. and check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little video if you don't mind to kind of... There we go. So we got Kevin McQueen in the house too and he actually worked up in the studios. We did a whole vlog because it's been years, but we actually went to high school together. And I specifically remember at one point when we first started out, you did, you were doing the little cars. And one of your very first ones was Scared Straight, or Scared Stiff. And then you had the cars, and you were showing me in your sketchbook the cars at the time. This was probably, what, 94 or something? And, uh, man, this is incredible. This has been so cool. And I don't know if you've been following the channel, but I've done a ton of playlists on Vin and to finally get a see you again man this is way cool and Kevin's got his mom with him too so this has been so cool and I'm, I'm stoked because I was standing out front I'm like I know I'm gonna see him eventually so thank you so much for all your hard work man and uh, I think you saw the vlog I actually did about you and kind of how we grew up and loved and all the same stuff and, yeah it's amazing you just kind of stars at home and uh, how did you find that uh Actually, you know what? How did I find that? Oh, my Columbo-like research, yeah. Google Online. Could bring my channel all this so I hope you were cool with that, though, because I always keep my channel pretty respectful and stuff like that. So. But yeah, the man, the myth, the legend himself. It's good to finally get you on the vlog, bro. It's, it's been a long time coming. Good to see you, bro. That's so cool, man. This has been like this amazing. I didn't even know. Oh. Oh, there was a little hidden T. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. I never realized that. So this is the guy. He lives in uh, Southeast Portland, I guess. Still. So oh around. no way! Tony Murphy, uh, you've got the real raisins, though. You've got the you've got these guys, the actual screen used, the screen used raisins. Yeah. I didn't know that though. That 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 guy yeah, animated a lot of these little ones. And he's from Portland too. Yeah. Oh, that's... He was an animator at the studio. Oh, that's so cool. In fact, that sharpie on the back is AC, the voice, uh, and then I got Plimpton to autograph it too, so I was wondering if you might be able to. Cool, man. Thank you so much for doing that. I love it, man. Cool. Yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you, bro. This has just been so wild. Like, It's just kind of like sensory overload right now. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, my Simpsons just went to Disney too, so we're like... We're long lost brothers, but now we're more so even. <laughs> That's so rad, dude. The next, we're gonna we actually see if we can talk to Will's son. Huge fan of your dad's work over the years. It's a pleasure to meet you, bro. What a great movie. Uh, it's The Creeper with a K. So you'll find my, you'll see my ugly mug on there if you type in The Creeper. But over the last like four or five years, I've documented a lot of your dad's work. The studio, claymation station, just a ton of stuff. But it's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, this is Greg Tamlin, who's the director of The Kiss, our new project. Oh, nice! Yeah, plug it. It was uh, my dad's last dream that you saw in the documentary. The Kiss was his uh, uh, theater, theatrical, musical dream. Uh, 
the story. That is currently playing at Lakewood Theater. So go check it out. I saw it on. Uh, uh, I saw postings of it. I'm gonna definitely have to come check it out. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys both. Thank you so much. Tonight we got Will's son in the house. Thank you so much again for doing this for us, you guys. Your dad's legacy lives long in Portland. People are born. I absolutely love your dad. So thank you. And make sure you check out the kids. That's right. Peace out, guys. Thank you. Oh my gosh. How cool was that, you guys, to be able to meet Bill Plimpton too, get his autograph, and uh, see all those archives from that. From all the digging in Will's studio, that, that was so cool they were able to get all that info. Man, what a great time. <laughs> that was so cool, man gonna do it for tonight if you guys are new here make sure you hit that red subscribe button that'll dial you into being a creeper today you can also ring that bell that way when i creep you guys will be the first to creep if you did enjoy this give it a thumbs up till next time creeper out for now peace